Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great. So as you would have just seen, my trip through the Scottish Highlands was pretty epic. And so today I wanted to share with you the photos and the videos I captured from the trip. I'm gonna say pretty early on, but some of the photos I captured on this trip were my most favorite I've gotten in a long time. Being able to hike around the mountains and explore the cliffs and photograph them was honestly so different for me. And I had a really great time doing it. I went on this trip with my friend Alice. She has this awesome van set up and a beautiful dog called Pumpkin, which will feature quite a lot in this video. And the three of us went up on a three night journey through Glencoe all the way up to Skye and so yeah living in the van was actually super fun it's the first time I've done a van trip in like a few years for me and so we were able to explore a lot more on our own schedule and it was great for me because I was able to photograph different spots when the light was just right. All of the photos you're going to see were shot on the Fujifilm XE4 with the XF 23mm and the 18 to 55mm. All of the video was on the A7 IV which you'll probably be able to tell and as always guys be sure to like this video or even consider subscribing. Our first stop on our road trip was a place called Glencoe. This is actually a super popular spot. It's uh, not too far from Glasgow, so it's a really easy day trip for a lot of people. And I've been here before, but I haven't actually photographed it properly. So when we did arrive, we could see a ton of tour buses and a lot of people in the car park. So we parked up the van and took a little hike down and tried to find our own little spot. It was here in Glencoe that I actually started shooting with the 18 to 55. Like where you hike is really up against the mountains. So using the 23 mil was quite cropped in and a bit too tight for me. So using the 18 to 55 was a really great way to get some of those wider shots. So after a bit more exploring around Glencoe and hiking around some of the cliffs there, we got back in the van and started making our way up to a town called Glenfinnan. Glenfinnan is actually a really popular spot with a lot of Harry Potter fans because it's where the Hogwarts Express comes across a bridge. And so when Alice and I arrived, we actually timed it pretty perfectly with the arrival of the train. The train only passes the bridge twice a day, so the fact that we got there that time was pretty lucky. And while we were there, I did manage to capture a few stills. I wasn't in the best position for it, but the shot I did capture of everyone actually taking photos of the train, I really liked. We didn't last too long on the road because at the next corner we saw a sign that said coffee and we decided to hop out and grab one. One of the locals who we met there had converted this horse trailer into a coffee van to try and capitalize on a lot of the tourists coming through. So we got out, we had a chat with him and then I managed to get a few stills of his van because I thought it looked really cool. By this time it was pretty late in the afternoon and the sun set so late in Scotland so you really lost a lot of your bearings in terms of the day but by then we made it to our campsite which was up by the beach getting ready for our next day where we took the ferry to Skye. Ferry to Sky was actually quite a choppy journey. Uh, the weather the night before was pretty gale force winds and so the ride over was a bit wobbly but along the way I did capture a few photos of some people on their holiday and people taking pictures themselves. The second we arrived on Sky, I was blown away by the landscape. It's so vast and green and just really rugged. And given that the weather was quite cloudy and rainy throughout the days, you really got a good idea of what kind of a place this is.
so our mission for the day after we had arrived was to get to a place called Store. Store is this mountain range that you can hike up and get some photos at. Once we arrived, we got our stuff sorted and began to make the hike up. This hike is something you can do for as far as you want. There's not really a summit. It's once you get to a spot that you're pretty comfortable with, you can go to. up I put the 23 mil on the XE4 and began to snap away in kind of a different style to what most landscape photographers or travel photographers would have done. Obviously when you go to a place like this you want to capture that grand image which I was pretty stoked with a few once we got to the top but along the way I was trying to experiment with some different kind of street style portraits or even just like walking candid shots along the way up. So after a while of hiking around, we got to the top and we we're pretty happy with how far we had made it. It was honestly such a beautiful view and you were so high up and we got really lucky with the clouds because our covering the mountains and, and the sun which made capturing photos a lot easier. After this hike, we decided to make the journey over to Neist Point. Alice was a bit worried, but the Australian in me realising it was only an hour away wasn't much of a drive, so we did make it there to Nice Point for sunset. And to be honest, Nice Point was actually the best decision we made because I've never been to such an incredible spot. I was so caught up in capturing photos that I didn't realize the time and so we actually had to have some dinner pretty quickly but after dinner we headed out on a little hike and to explore some of the cliffs. Nice Point is famous for its lighthouse and there's a really cool vantage point you can go to go check it out. Unfortunately I didn't bring my Sony with me so I didn't get much b-roll of this little trip but a lot of the photos I did capture were definitely my favorite. this cliff were just a bunch of stoked photographers they were as excited as I was to see this light hitting the cliff face and so I made sure to get this classic photo that I really wanted it looked stunning but I also like I said took the time to turn around and photograph a few other people up there actually enjoying the moment. It gets super weird when taking the same photos as everyone else, so with everyone facing this cliff, I saw it as a good opportunity to capture a few portraits of people. I guess it's a bit of a different thing, probably not everyone will do it, but I really enjoy the types of photos that come out of it. Overall, this Scottish Highlands trip was one of my most favourite. I hadn't seen my friend Alice in four years, and so reconnecting and just enjoying the trip was one of the best experiences I've had in a long time. From a photography point of view, I was just stoked with the images I came home with. I think a lot of them were really my style. They're what I kind of imagined I wanted to capture, and having the XE4 really exceed my expectations in terms of battery life, picture quality, just everything in general was so refreshing. Even though I pushed it through four days of a pretty relentless photography adventure, it really held up great. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and didn't mind me talking for too much, but I really wanted to kind of explain the trip and along with the B-roll. But again, if you did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up or even consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.